Hey guys, today we're going to go over angles and parallel lines notes. So last time you guys learned the different names for all the different angle pairs. Now we're going to go over to how go over how they are related to each other. So first of all, when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the following pairs of angles are congruent. So corresponding angles are congruent. And also alternate interior and alternate exterior, both of the alternates. And then when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the following pairs of angles are supplementary. So um, either of the consecutives, so consecutive interior angles and consecutive exterior. Also, you will frequently see um, vertical angles used, which will also be congruent, and you also will see linear pairs, which would also be supplementary, but those two you should already know. We're just kind of going over that again. So in this example, it says that angle two is 75 degrees, and to fill in all of the rest. Well, let's fill in all the congruent ones first, because that makes it easier. So all corresponding angles are congruent, which means that to correspond with two, you skip over three and six is also 75 degrees. And then um, alternate interior are also congruent. So this one is also 75 degrees. Oops. Um, alternate exterior are congruent. So this one is also 75 degrees. And also the vertical angles, right? These are also congruent. Okay, so to figure out the other one, um, you have same side interior, consecutive interior, both of these together have to be 180. So if you do 180 minus 75, you get 105 for this one. And then alternate exterior congruent, so this one is also 105. Corresponding angles are congruent, so you would skip and go to 1, so this would be 105. And same thing with the other side. Um, vertical angles are congruent, so this is 105. And this is 105, because these are vertical also. All right, so what I want you all to see is there is a pattern for this. It's every other one. And then the opposite on the other, for some reason my one didn't stay. There we go. Um, and then across on the other side. So these are all the same angles. And it will always be that way. For any set of parallel lines cut by a transversal, it will always be that pattern. So now we just fill in all these answers. This is 105 degrees. This is 105 degrees. <clears throat> 4 is 75 degrees. 5 is 105 degrees, 6 is 75, 7 is 105, and 8 is 75. But this pattern, the pink and the yellow, will happen on every single set of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, so now we're going to use some algebra in order to solve these things. So first, we're given 1 and 2. So you find where one and two is. That's the first thing. And then you decide what type of angle pair that is. Well, this is skip on the same side and it skips and goes to the next one. Because when we're talking about these two, this is the transversal. And then these are the parallel lines. Whenever we're talking about one and two, it can switch for others. Um, but when we're just talking about 1 and 2, that's the way it works. So 1 is on the same side of the transversal as 2, and it skips over this angle there and goes to 2. So same side skip is 
um, corresponding angles, which are congruent. That's what we just learned up here at the very, very top. Corresponding angles are congruent, which means we're going to set these equal to each other and solve. So you have 3x plus 15, and then this is wrong. This should actually be 4x minus 5. On yours, it should be right because I'm going to fix it after this. Um, but it wasn't wrong on mine. I mean, it wasn't corrected on mine. So 3x plus 15 is equal to 4x minus 5. Subtract 3x from both sides. You have 15 is equal to x minus 5. Then you add 5 to both sides. And x is 20, which is one of the things we're looking for. All right, so now... This is all the yellow stuff, in case you're wondering where all this came from. It's all the yellow. Now we need to find where angle 3 is, and how does it relate to either 1 or 2. So whenever we're talking about angle 3, this stuff changes. And we're going to use angle 3 with angle 2. So whenever we're going to ignore this. We don't need the 1 anymore. Now this is the transversal. And these are the parallel lines. Don't forget the double lines. That means parallel. And again, it's on the same side of the transversal, and it skips this one. So they are corresponding. So you can set them equal to each other. 2 is 4x minus 5, and 3 is 5y. But we know what x is. We just found it. So we're going to plug that in. 4 times 20 is 80. 80 minus 5 is 75. And then divide by 5. And y is 15. And that's how you do both of those. All right, on this one, you need to extend this out and extend these. So this is your transversal, and these are your parallel lines for this problem. Um, we have x's and y's, so let's focus on the x's first and see how they're related. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they skip over that one. So they're corresponding, and you're going to set them equal to each other. Subtract 4x from both sides. This gives me x minus 5 is equal to 10. Add 5 to both sides. This gives me x is 15. All right, so now we've got to deal with the y. And you can choose which one you want to relate y to. You could do these two together and say they're a linear pair. You could do these two together and say they're consecutive interior. It doesn't matter which way you set it up. You can use either one. Um, I'm going to use the consecutive interior, mainly just because there's a plus instead of a minus, and adding is easier than subtracting. There, there's really not a good reason. You could use either one, and it really doesn't matter. Um, so remember, consecutive interior are supplementary, so you have to add them both together and set them equal to 180. We already know what x is, so we need to fill that in. So then, 4 times 15 is 60. 60 plus 10 is 70, minus 4 is 60, oops, plus 66. Subtract 66 from both sides. 6y is equal to 114, divide by 6, and y is 19. That's how you solve that one. Okay, so again, we are giving, we're given x, y, and z. So we might as well solve them in order. Let's focus on 6, and the only real number 
or angle measure that we're given is this one. So whenever we're looking at that, this is the transversal, and these are the parallel lines. And they are on the same side, on the in, same side of the transversal and the inside of the parallel lines. So same side, inside is consecutive interior, which means that you add them both together and set them equal to 180. Subtract 106. X is 74 degrees. Yes. So now we actually know two different measures because we know 106 and we know that X is 74 degrees. So now let's do Y. Oh, this should also say, it should say X, Y, and Z. I will fix that on yours as well. Um, so now we can look at Y. And we could use 106 and make it supplementary, but it would be easier if you use 74 because then they're corresponding and they are congruent. So this X is we use consecutive interior. Now we're going to use corresponding, which are congruent. So 2Y is equal to 74. Divide both sides by 2. And Y is 37. Okay. So now we have to deal with this Z. Um, so if you remember, I had sh in the notes up, up here, I showed you the pattern right here that they always have. So if I go ahead and figure out the pattern on this one, it will help me solve Z. So all of these angles are congruent, and all of these are congruent to each other. But a yellow and a pink are supplementary. So the easiest way to do that is to just find the pattern like that. And by the way, this stuff changes whenever you're talking about Z. Now this is the transversal. And then these are the parallel lines, which is how we have that pattern. Um, so if you have a yellow and a pink, they're going to be supplementary angles. So you do 4z plus 6 plus 74 is equal to 180. Remember, I write my z's that way because I also write my 2's like this, and I don't want y'all to get them confused. So 6 plus 74 is 80. Subtract 80 from both sides. 4z is equal to 100. Divide by 4. And z is 25. So that's how you do that one. All right, this one's going to be a little bit harder because it has squares, which means we've got to factor, and y'all haven't done this since algebra. But both of these y's, and yes, it'll be easier to solve for y first, are alternate interior angles, which means they're congruent. So you have y squared is equal to 8y minus 15. Okay. We need the entire thing to be equal to zero in order to factor. So we're going to move all of this over to this side. So these will cancel, and you have y squared minus 8y plus 15 is equal to zero. Now we have to factor this. So there are multiple ways you would have been taught this. Um, but the easiest way that I have found to teach it is you come up with all of the factors, at least when there is no number there. If there's no number there, this is the easiest way. If there's a number there, there's a different way that you got to do it. Um, but these are all the factors of 15. So you multiply 1 times 15. There is no 2 times anything to get 15, but 3 times 5 is 15, and 4 does not go into 15. And after 4 is 5, so it wraps back around. So that's how we know we're done. So then we have to look at these factors and say which set 
can I add together to give me negative 8? So if you make both of these negatives, then they would add to give you negative 8, and negative 3 times negative 5 does give you positive 15. So you end up with y minus 3, and then y minus 5 equals 0. That's these, both of these are the same thing. It's just one is factored and one isn't. So to solve it, you set each of them equal to zero. Then you would add three to both sides. And y is three or y is, oh, this is supposed to be plus five, <laughs> sorry. I just copied the exact same thing again. There we go. Or y is 5. And those are two possibilities. So in order to figure out what the x is, we're going to have to use both y possibilities to do that. So now we need to deal with this x. So you can use these and say they're a linear pair. Or... You can use these and say they're consecutive interior. It doesn't matter either way. It's whichever one you would rather deal with. I'm going to use the consecutive interior, but it really doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer both ways. So we're going to set it up where y squared plus x is equal to 180. But we have two different numbers for y. So first we're going to use the 3. And then second, we're going to use the 5. 3 squared is 9. Subtract 9 on both sides. And x is 171. And then on this one, 5 squared is 25. Subtract 25 on both sides. And x is 155. And those are your possibilities. And I think that's the end of notes. All right, we're done.